Hey everyone, I'm Clayfect, and today we're going to make Jack the Skeleton from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Another Mr. Clayfect request. But we are not just going to make any other old Jack the Skeleton sculpture. No, no, no. What we are going to do is making a baby Jack Skeleton sitting on a swing, probably wearing a little Christmas hat. Because my lovely husband's wishes are never simple. And I apparently love to punish myself. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, I'm starting by building a swing set, so to speak. I wanted the twirly thingy. The big branch that Jack is walking on and looking at the moon. It is also on the cover of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, that twirly branch mountainish thingy, I want. So, that is where our swing is going to be, just to make it a lot more difficult for myself. Now, I have never been a fan of physics, and gravity is still sort of a mystery to me sometimes. So, I did get a lot of assistance with making this swing from Mr. Clayfect, which I am very grateful for, but at the same time another debate occurred between us, a debate I hope you can help me solve later on in this video. Right now, I'm just filling out the base, so to speak, using a mix between aluminium foil and Sculpey Ultralight before I start working on the chain for the swing. Now I didn't have a perfect stick for the armature wire, so I took a hot glue stick and shaped it to my liking before I wrapped the armature wire around it. Now due to Mr. Clefix's advice, I did make them a little elongated and cut the opening at the side of the chains to make them more durable. And now I'm playing with the chains apparently. Oh god, now back to the swing. Now with the chains done, all I had to do was making a little place that Jack could place his little bony behind on. Now while I get the wood board some wooden texture and scuff it up a bit, why don't I tell you about the predicament between me and Mr. Clifford? Now you probably know this type of debate. This type of meaningless, harmless, fun debate you can have with your partner or your friend that really doesn't have a point to it, but somehow you end up stuck in it. And for me and Mr. Clefic this time, the debate was, is The Nightmare Before Christmas a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie? So throughout the sculpture, we debated and debated. Mr. Clefic means that it's a Christmas movie since it is called The Nightmare Before Christmas and it is all about kidnapping Santa which is a classical Christmas plot, I guess. Well, I mean it's a Halloween movie, since the main character is the Pumpkin King Jack the Skeleton. And the song that literally plays at the start says, This is Halloween, this is Halloween, this is Halloween. Halloween. Come on, it has to be a Halloween movie, right? Anyway, I hope you can help us figure it out. What do you think? Leave a comment. Is it Christmas? or a Halloween movie. This predicament is also why I decided to make this character between Halloween and Christmas, just to give my husband the benefit of the doubt. Now back to the sculpture and the head that I'm making. Now Jack's head is fairly simple, but a thing that I find very difficult is to make it baby-like. It is almost impossible because his head is literally just a round ball. So I decided to push his features a little more together and make his eyes a little bit bigger and hope that the body is going to tell that it's a baby Jack and not a grown up Jack. Now, at this point you're probably wondering about the magnet and it's fairly simple. Even though I am right and it is a Halloween movie, I have to give Mr. Clefic there is some Christmas-ish aspects to the movie. So, I want to give him a Christmas hat, but at the same time, 
I don't want it to be a permanent Christmas hat. That is why I baked a magnet into Little Jack's skull and now I'm placing a magnet into the Christmas hat. Using a thin layer of aluminium foil to make sure I don't squeeze the hat too tight on Jack's head. Making sure that the hat fits perfectly into the skull. At the same time, I can take it off as I please. And this just worked perfectly. I am so happy with the result. And I have to admit, the Christmas hat does fit him very well. I had a lot of fun making this sculpture, even though there was a lot of aspects and elements to it. I really found it challenging and I just had fun with it. One of the reasons I made the swing set before I made Jack was because that way I could keep measuring him and make sure that he fit in, so to speak, and it just worked like a charm. I am not saying it was an easy sculpture, but it was a lot of fun. Now I debated a lot with myself when I made the body, because Jack sort of has a V shape, and that's not very childlike, so I debated if I should make him round or square, or what kind of shape I should give baby Jack, but I decided to give him a slightly V shape to keep the Jackness of him so to speak, while also make him look like a child. Now I am folding the amateur wire doubled as you can see, and the reason for that is actually quite <laughs> short, shorts, <laughs> oh I would stop. I am going to give him shorts instead of pants. But if you look at the bones, there are actually two bones in the leg, not just one, which means I have to have two amateur wires sticking out before I put some clay on it and try to make it look like a bone. Now his body was in the ugly face huh? at this point, like big time. I doubted everything I did. Oh. I doubted that I could make such a thin snake of clay stick to the wire, and I doubted that I could make the leg bones as close together as they needed to be. Now, since there wasn't much to do with babying his face, since it, he is literally just a skull, guys, I had to make sure that the suit and the body really looked like a toddler. And in my perspective, me giving him shorts really made the difference. Though I don't hope he goes out on a winter night looking like that. That would be bone chilling. <laughs> Get it? Because he's a skeleton. <laughs> anyway, I stop now. I promise. I promise. Even though I wasn't done at all with the bottom of the sculpture, I started on the arms, again simply to fit him in and make sure that he balanced on the swing. Though spoiler alert, he didn't. Not at this point anyway. So I kept going, making his shoes and his little pants before I moved on to making his suit. I don't know why, but there is something satisfying about making clothes, I have to say. I took a strip of clay and wrapped it around him before I smoothed one of the sides. And with that, I had a shirt on him. Though with a bit more fiddling, I actually think I managed to make it look like a little suit and not a pajama shirt. Now, reference photos was my lifeline here. I looked at so many different pictures of Jack just to figure out how I should turn his suit into a uh, toddler suit, literally, and thankfully Jack's design was fairly simple, meaning that some simple tweaks here and there really made a lot of difference, though at this point it had gone from pajamas to kimono, in my opinion, but with a little more cutting and a lot more looking at reference photos, I actually think that I managed to make a pretty decent suit, and the ugly face was finally over. Now all I had to do was put his little head on before I started giving the suit some details. 
the phenomenon of Halloween is actually pretty alien to me. Since when I grew up in my home country, we didn't have Halloween. No, we are something a lot weirder <laughs> called Fastalown, which was in February, I think. Still is, it's not gone at all. But Halloween has become more and more normal in my country. And I think it's fun to see how the development of this culture has mixed in with my culture. Because even though we dress up in costumes in Fast Alarm, it doesn't have to be scary. But it is pretty scary that one of the main events is beating the cat out of the barrel. Not that there is a cat in it anymore, but in old days apparently there was, now there's candy. Anyway, it's a weird tradition, but now we have two of them. And me being a candy and horror lover as I am, I couldn't be more pleased. Now back to the sculpture and the tiny little bat butterfly I'm making. It was a very very tiny and delicate process. but. With the bat done, I could place it, and then it was on to the testing again, which didn't go as planned at all. The wire wasn't sturdy enough at all, so I had to wipe the wire around the chains, which means I had to bake him before I get working on the arms, and the arms were going to be a lot harder than I anticipated. I put that chain on and off that poor sculpture and that poor base so many times. I'm surprised that none of it broke. Now some of you are probably wondering why go through all this trouble and find a balance point and try to make the arms like that when I could just make some rope and make it sturdy with some clay. And I give you the same answer I gave Mr. Clifford when he asked me that. If I made it sturdy like that then poor little Jack wouldn't be able to swing in the swing. And what's the point of a swing if you can't swing in it? It ain't no big thing, just show her a little swing. No, I wanted a swing that actually was able to function, sort of. So that is why I went through all this trouble. And I have to say, I am so happy for it. I think it was totally worth it. Even though it was very, very difficult. Not only sculpting these tiny skeleton hands, but also positioning the tiny skeleton hands. So the cover, the mending between the wire and the chains that I need to do. Making the hands fit and make it look natural, plus the trim around the hands for the suit was probably the most difficult and the most critical thing of the sculpture I had to do. Not to mention I had to do all that while there still was a chain attached, which means I often had problems getting around the chain. But as I always say when it comes to clay, persistence is the key. And I really took my time here and I am so happy I did so. Even though it was sort of a weird finger dance between a skeleton myself and a chain, I am so happy how the arms came out. Now after I have blended the arms, as I'm doing here, all I had to do was for number 20th time put little Jack back on his swing set and see if it worked. And thankfully it did work. I was just over the moon at this point. But just because he's finished doesn't mean that we are. We still have a base to do. Now at my local crafting store, I came across this funny air dried clay that should work like a wok texture and I thought, why not try and using that? It's been ages since I tried air dried clay and now I know why. I hate air dried clay. I admit it does give a little texture, but when it comes down to it, then no. No, it was definitely not worth it using air dry clay. And I'm not sure I'm ever going back to it again. And if I am, then remind me of this video. <laughs> it was like playing with sandy clay. That you can't even put in an oven because then it will crack. I just felt so dirty afterwards. Nice. Anyway, 
with the base finely covered, I moved on to give it some texture and then it was finally onto the paint. And after the air dried clay, I actually looked forward to painting him. I painted the Christmas hat red and set it over to dry before I gave his nose and his mouth a black wash. And the reason for that is because I wanted it out of the way before I started with the white base paint. And while I waited for that to dry, I painted the base coat on the swing a dark brown. Before I could get started on the many upon many layers of white. Now I used war paint matte colors here, totally on purpose because even though they say they are matte, they sort of have this satin finish, which just worked perfectly with my skull. And it covers a lot better than many other colors you can find on the market. And with the white base down, I switch over to the Christmas hat again. I painted the trim and the little tip tough thingy white. Before I went back to Jack and painted his little shirt a light gray. There was a lot of back and forth going down for me at this point because I didn't feel like waiting for the paint to dry. So then I dry washed the swing after I had gotten a dark wash finally finishing the swing and making all the cracks and the wear and tear come to life, so to speak. With the swing done, it was time for the black and oh my god, it's nerf wagon painting a dark color over white. Because if some of the black unintentionally gets on some of the white, it's almost impossible to get off. But it was oddly satisfying to see it all come together, I have to say. And with the black base down, then I had to paint the stripes. Talking about not shaking on your hands, right? This is speeded up by 800%. That's how slow I was going, in hope of not making a crooked line. Thankfully, Tim Burton's style is very organic. So if it does look a bit crooked, then it, it really doesn't matter that much, in my opinion, because his whole style is crooked. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why I find his style so easy to start with. That and the simple design. Well, easy if you don't put them on a swing, or give them a Christmas hat, or decide to play with air dry clay. I really know how to make it hard for myself, don't I? Now with the little Jack painted, it's time to give his chain some rust. By dabbing a brownish reddish color on with a q-tip. Very very simple and I just love the effect it has. Now for the base I took a very dark almost black blue and painted on. The light in the movie in the Nightmare Before Christmas is very sparse to say at the least. So I pretty much took a guess on what color I thought the wood mountain thingy would be and decided that a dark blue would look nice. With the base painted, I dry washed it with a little more bluish tone again to make the texture that I had made pop. And I think it was about here that I was satisfied with the base finally and I forgave the air dry clay. But with all that painted, all I had to do was assembling the little fella and put on his Christmas hat in hope of making Mr. Clefect happy. Before I tested the swing. And I am so happy with it, I have to say. It worked like a charm. <laughs> but I think that is it for this sculpture and it for this video. I hope you like little Jack. I am in love with him. I am so happy how he turned out. I think he came out amazing, I mean it's the first time I tried to make anything on a swing and it just came out great. It shows that if you really take your time with it, then you can make something amazing. But enough of my yapping about my sculpture. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you next time. But if you can't wait until next time, why not click on the square to your right? Then you're going to see my very first video where I made Oogie Boogie. It's slightly terrible, but also entertaining. But until then, bye!